Okay, Ian, um, do you have any gem where you have your eyes on? So basically, is there any project we like? So we shared this with the customers. We did a tech review on a project. Um, this was one or two months back via our customer newsletter. And it's also on our website. If you go to tokenmetrics.com, we have a review on this project. Uh, but one project that we've, we've told our customers that, that uh, is worth keeping a very good eye on. Actually, I'll, I'll bring two projects up since, since we're here. So the first one is called The Graph, thegraph.com. So this is a pretty popular project amongst developers. Now, we're not saying go out there and buy the token today or when it launches, because that's not our, our approach, right? Uh, for, for those who know me, I'm more of a, I'm more of a value investor, more, more long-term. I do trade as well, but even when I, when I trade, there's swing trades over a week to a month. But from a pure technology standpoint, this is worth keeping on your radar and, and then waiting for when is a good time to get the token, right? Because when this launches, as with most tokens, it'll be pump and dump, right? So that's not the ideal way to, to get in. Now, if you can earn the token naturally through yield farming or just using their network, that's the best approach, right? Because then you aren't really putting any capital at risk, uh, right? You, you aren't buying any capital. So for example, like earning yield farming tokens, when you just stake your, 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 your crypto and they give you that, that crypto asset, that to me is the best approach because you aren't buying any crypto. So the only risk you have is just the smart contract risk, but that, that could be hedged through uh, Nexus Mutual and some, um, some other insurance platforms or even with, with, with options as we covered er earlier. But this is worth keeping an eye on. So I'll qu quickly go through this. The graph is an indexing protocol for curing networks like Ethereum and, and IPFS. Anyone can build and publish open APIs called subgraphs, making data easily accessible. So some of the pro projects already building on top of the graph are pretty well known. So if we just go down here to the partners, right? So Uniswap, Synthetix, Decentraland, and Aragon. So they have some pretty big people or, or companies already using them. And they did, uh, and here are the list of companies backing them. Digital Currency Group, uh, Multicoin Capital, uh, Compound. So this is on, is on our radar. Now uh, the other gem uh, also on our radar, actually somebody in our private network is an equity investor in this and he, he's, he's the one who told me about it. This was early in the year. Uh, so let me pull it up here. So it's called Flow. This is a coin list uh, token sale. So the platform for a new generation of games, apps, and the digital assets that power them. This is a blockchain being built by the same company that built CryptoKitties. So this is worth keeping an eye on. We, we, we do have the tech review on tokenmetrics.com. And they're working with some pretty big names, right? They're working with NBA Top Shot, Ubisoft, Warner Music Group, UFC, CryptoKitties, so this is pretty much, I've not done too much diving into it myself, but our tech team re really liked it a lot. And this is pretty much a blockchain for, for gaming, is my understanding. Basically for mainstream adoption. So we're keeping an eye on, the, on this. And lots of people have had an interest in NFTs. And I'm also in the process of getting into the NFT uh, game. So uh, one I've been looking on, oh, I did get an invite to join NBA Top Shop. So I have made an account, but I myself have not purchased any. But if you're really into NFTs, look into this, right? So for those who don't, who don't know, NFTs stands for non-fungible tokens. So basically called collectibles. So this is basically tokenizing NBA trading cards 
except as opposed to being traded cards, these are more like moments or they're like videos or, or animations, but basically videos. So for example, like here we have a game winner from Anthony Davis in the NBA playoffs. So they'll tokenize this and put it on a blockchain. And for anybody who's played NBA 2K uh, and knows how you collect packs for, for my team, it's pretty much like tokenize my team. Or if anybody has played Madden or like my team in Madden, anything like that, you're basically collecting cards and you can then resell them. So I've been in some Telegram groups kind of keeping an eye on this. So they, they have what they call drops where they drop these, these NFTs and people bid to, to, I mean, I'm sorry, people buy them and they sell out pretty fast because I've been getting emails. Like the last one I saw sold out in, a, in less than one hour. So they'll have limited amounts. So let's say for example, they'll have this Luca magic NFT of him doing this move. Let's say they'll have, uh, I don't know, a thousand or 2000 of them. People go there. Uh, they, they announce the drop, people buy, and then people resell them on marketplaces. Uh, for example, if we go here to the marketplace, I mean, let's see what, so this LeBron James pack is going for 83 bucks. Uh, maybe we, this is actually my first time going to the marketplace here. Um, let's do, Okay, I guess it, anyway, that didn't work. Uh, but I see here this Zach Levine one is 371. So this is this to me is pretty interesting because I do love basketball. Um, so maybe like I can see here this Vince Carter one is going for 950. Right, so it'll, it'll be pretty cool to maybe kind of get into it. I still haven't pulled the trigger yet to, to buy any, any of the other packs. But uh, to answer your question, those are the projects that I have an interest in um, that I think could be possible gems. Uh, Bill, uh, any comments on any of that? You know, I really like this idea, uh, particularly if we're sort of in this sort of depressed economic environment of using crypto and blockchain to create something uplifting like basketball cards, right? So I love that part of it. Uh, what I don't want to see is people using this stuff for collateral in DeFi. <laughs> okay uh, <laughs> that the, i don't want to see the lending nft lending? yeah right so that that, that becomes <laughs> the subprime lending of crypto no <laughs> okay yeah. so have ha have a great time have a great time with the collectibles but don't be borrowing money against your pokemon cards <laughs> <laughs> yeah because actually i was uh hearing about that uh this week i think bitboy or elliot Elliot made a video on that. Uh, and there's some platforms that, yeah, I think it's pretty crazy. Um, yeah, but if you think about it though, and on what, I guess in other markets, people borrow money on art, right? Like, like the super wealthy, they have like a, they, they have tens of millions or hundreds of millions in art. They can borrow versus that, but obviously that's not like Pokemon per se, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, interesting times we're in in crypto. <laughs> People are, are dying laughing <laughs> from those comments. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay. All right. So tell us what you think. Uh, are you bullish on, on any of those projects? So we covered uh, Flow. We covered the graph. We covered uh, NBA Top Shot for NFTs. That's one I have an interest in. Uh, but yeah, tell us what you think down in the comments below.